I'm Tom Wilmer. Come along and join me for a journey of discovery of northeastern Nebraska. Six years before the massacre at Wounded Knee in nearby South Dakota, the Genoa, Nebraska U.S. Industrial Indian School opened in 1884 and operated continuously until the midst of the Great Depression. Today, the original buildings of the boarding school are loaded with artifacts, interpretive displays, and photographs. Join Nancy Carlson, curator at the U.S. Indian School Interpretive Center in Genoa, Nebraska. We're outside here at the Genoa Indian School Interpretive Center. Nancy Carls, and you're a volunteer? Yes, I'm a volunteer uh-huh. here. And it's all volunteer, isn't it? It is yeah. all volunteer. Let's go back in time and the roots and the beginnings of the Indian School at Genoa, Nebraska. It started in 1884. Genoa location was decided because the federal government owned this brick school that they had built for the Pawnee Nation. And after the Pawnee were moved to Oklahoma, then this building stood vacant for a little while. So they said, well, we already own this brick school. And and in the 1880s, this was at least several days' rides away from all of the reservations. So that got the separation between family and students that they were wanting. Contextually, it's always easy to look back in time and criticize. But let's try and go back in time and talk about what the best intent was of the Bureau of Indian Affairs. We like to make them into this evil empire, but that really wasn't the case contextually. No, it wasn't, because remember, this was just right at the end of the Indian Wars. Many of the people within the armies actually wanted to eliminate the Indian problem, which meant eradicating all Native Americans. And there was a Mr. Pratt, he was in the army, and he said, no, I think there's a different way. And so first he tried it with adult men, and they didn't quite conform. So then he said, let's take the children and, quote, civilize them, teach them English and how the white society works. And then he says, in a couple of generations, we'll have everybody civilized. Mm -hmm. His intent was good. He didn't want these people killed. He wanted them to be able to fit into our society. Looking back with the luxury of time into the past, one of the biggest disconnects and the most painful things to talk about is that stripping away and forbidding of speaking your own native language, your dress, your hair. Talk about the negative. That was very, very hard on those children. When they came here, they had to learn English just as fast as they could because they were punished if they spoke their native language. They were immediately stripped of all of their native clothing and their hair was cut, which often is a sign of mourning in the native culture. These students, it was that was very, very hard on them. Let's talk about the cultural disconnect within the Native American population, that you had tribes near each other that had a mission to destroy each other, and suddenly kids from enemy tribes have to be living together. Talk about that aspect. That would have been very, very hard for these students because they had grown up knowing this person was an enemy or that person was an enemy, and to now have to live and work and play and do everything with them. It was quite a an experiment in these schools to have all of these students here that basically their parents hated each other to be combined together and forced to live here. At its height, the school here at Genoa, what was the population and was it typical of the schools? Their largest year population was 1932 and there was 599 students. That was a little bit high for them. It, it usually ran around three or to 400 students. It started in 1884 with only 74, but it grew quite rapidly with, within five years. Today, there are still some people that are alive that were students here in the 30s. Yes, there are, and they're very interesting to talk to. We have recorded a lot of their different stories and what happened here, and it's quite eye-opening to hear everything that they went through and their feelings. When they came here, what was the center of focus of study? It was really... They had their reading and writing and arithmetic, but that was half a day, and the other half they had to learn a trade. These trades basically helped them survive. Give us a moment of some of the conversations 
conversations that you've had that were most touching with the kids that went here? A former student came at a very young age, was here for three years before he returned home. When he returned home, he suddenly realized he only knew English, and his grandparents, who he met, only knew Lakota. Mm-hmm. So that was very hard on him. What would somebody see? An experience today that remains of the school, the buildings and structures. There are. The manual training building is still here with a lot of the information inside. There's a scale model to kind of show the scope of the building. There are other houses and other buildings and barns that are privately owned that if we are given a time enough, we can arrange tours to see those also. In the, one of the barns, there are a lot of names carved into the rafters. And I remember one year, uh, this 80-some-year-old gentleman came back from California, and he said he wanted to see his name up on that rafter. Well, they had to find like a 20-foot ladder to get up there, and his son followed him up, and there were four people holding on to it to get him there. But he counted over the rafters, and he found his name, and he said that made the whole... Wow. trip worth it. Powerful stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yes, very much so. Genoa is located in Nebraska, kind of the middle. We welcome you to come. We're generally open more in the summer, but if you call, we'll arrange a tour for you. We're glad to have you here. And mainly just helping former students and their families discover about their ancestors is a big thing that keeps us going here. Nancy Carlson with the Genoa U.S. Indian School Foundation in Genoa, Nebraska. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're glad to have you here. You've been listening to an excerpt from an in-depth series on Nebraska featured on the Lowell Thomas award-winning travel show Journeys of Discovery with Tom Wilmer, a weekly featured podcast on NPR.org.